In the brightest day, in the darkest night, what happens when comic book physics gets a reality check? The Green Lantern's ring is one of the most powerful weapons in fiction, creating anything from shields to giant fists out of nothing but light. But here's the question, can you really make something solid out of light? Science says no, and it says it loudly. Today, we're breaking down the real physics behind the Green Lantern's powers, exposing the scientific impossibilities, and diving into some jaw-dropping quantum theories that almost make it plausible. Let's see how close we are turning fiction into fact. Before we get into the physics, let's talk lore. The Green Lantern Corps is an intergalactic police force created by the Guardians of the Universe, ancient beings who reside on the planet Oa. They created the rings as tools powered by willpower, able to construct anything the welder can imagine. Each ring chooses its bearer based on their ability to overcome fear, drawing energy from the central power battery on Oa. These rings channel green energy, the physical manifestation of willpower on the emotional electromagnetic spectrum. Yep, in DC Comics, emotions have wavelengths. Red is rage, yellow is fear, blue is hope, and green is will. The ring turns this willpower into hard light -like constructs, anything from machine guns to giant mechs. Lanterns like Hal Jordan or Jon Stewart use these constructs in battle, flight, and rescue. The ring's power is technically unlimited, but it's governed by the user's imagination concentration, and emotional stability. Lose focus and the constructs vanish. Use too much energy too fast and the ring runs dry until it recharges from a lantern battery. So far, so comic book. But how does this idea hold up under scientific scrutiny? Imagine Hal Jordan punching a tank with a glowing green boxing glove made entirely of light. Looks cool. Scientifically, it makes no sense. Light, in the real world, is made of photons, massless, energy-only particles. Photons don't slow down, clump together, or stop. They're constantly moving at light speed. No exceptions. For something to be solid, it needs mass. Mass gives matter inertia, volume, and the ability to resist force. You can't stack photons. A laser beam looks solid, but that's an illusion. It's just light bouncing off dust or mist. Try to touch it, and there's nothing there. Even Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared, doesn't help us. While it links energy and mass, photons always stay on the energy side of that equation. To give them mass, you need to convert them into actual matter, something we can only do in extremely controlled lab conditions. Scientists have tried freezing light using Bose-Einstein condensates, slowing it down to just 17 meters per second. That's impressive, but it still isn't solid, and it requires lasers, vacuum chambers, and atoms chilled near absolute zero. And when it comes to building objects that can punch, block, or support weight, there's simply no way to do that with pure light. So, the Green Lantern's ring is already defined the laws of photonics. But what if it isn't just using light? What if it's bending reality through a different set of rules entirely? Let's stretch the limits of science. What if the ring isn't making objects out of light, but out of exotic matter or quantum structured fields? Exotic matter is a hypothetical form of matter with negative mass. Push it, and it accelerates towards you. It shows up in theories about wormholes and warp drives, but has never been observed. If the Green Lantern Ring could summon exotic matter, it might explain how the constructs have weight, density, and solidity. The light could be a side effect, an energy signature, not the substance itself. There's also quantum entanglement. Particles become entangled, so that their states are instantly linked, even across distances. If the ring entangles particles in a specific shape, it might create a cohesive structure bound by quantum rules. And then there's the quantum vacuum. Even empty space isn't really empty. The Casimir effect shows that energy can appear between two metal plates due to quantum fluctuations. 
If the ring could harness vacuum energy, it might generate fields with mass-like properties. Sounds wild. It is. But these theories hint at ways we might cheat nature's rules. They also suggest serious limitations. Exotic matter could be unstable. Vacuum energy could collapse. Entangled particles could decohere. In other words, the ring might create amazing constructs, but they also might break apart with the right disruption. But let's go deeper. Another mind-bending theory involves programmable matter. This futuristic concept refers to matter that can change its physical properties based on software input. Imagine microscopic robots, nanobots, assembling in real time into any shape, triggered and held together by electromagnetic fields. The ring could theoretically act as a control hub, commanding trillions of these particles to form complex structures instantly. Current research in nanotechnology is working towards similar goals. DARPA has explored self-assembling systems. Researchers have made limited progress in creating programmable surfaces that alter shape or texture. Still, nothing today can match the scale or speed of a lantern construct. Another advanced angle is using gluon fields, the force-carrying particles that hold quarks together inside atomic nuclei. If a device could manipulate gluon interactions, it could potentially form dense constructs of quark-gluon plasma, an ultra-hot substance that existed right after the Big Bang. There's also the concept of space-time manipulation. In string theory and other quantum gravity frameworks, manipulating the fabric of space-time on small scales might let you create localized regions with altered physics. A lantern ring tapping into higher dimensional energy or quantum gravity could forge constructs by altering local physical laws mass, density, cohesion, at will. Of course, all of this is wildly speculative, but it gives us a scientific playground where the ring's effects might start to make sense. These theories help explain why constructs behave like real objects, but they also introduce a lot of instability. If the ring's constructs rely on extreme conditions, negative energy, quantum coherence, ultra-cold temperatures, then battlefield chaos could disrupt them. EMPs, Magnetic anomalies, or even strong thermal fluctuations might collapse a construct instantly. And then there's the issue of energy. Stabilizing exotic matter, maintaining gluon fields, or warping space-time would require astronomical energy. A single construct might use as much power as a fusion bomb or more. How does the ring manage this? In comics, the central battery seems like a limitless energy source. In real life, nothing comes close. But that's what makes the Green Lantern ring so intriguing. It sits on the boundary between what's impossible and what might, one day, be just barely achievable. But now that we've talked about how this could become possible, let's talk about a different aspect. Does the ring have a real-world weakness? In Flash number 135, Kyle Rayner creates a coffee mug from Linda Park. She takes a sip and says the coffee tastes like vinegar. Most readers chuckled, but some fans took it seriously. What if the constructs have chemical properties? Acetic acid, the main component of vinegar, is volatile. It combusts at 800 degrees Fahrenheit, reacts with oxidizers, and releases harmful gases when it breaks down. If the ring uses a chemical substrate, maybe as part of its energy-to-matter conversion, this could imply all constructs are chemically unstable. That means a villain using the right compound could make a lantern shield explode or collapse on contact. Would the Guardians hide this? Maybe. Telling your peacekeepers their constructs could be dissolved by a spray bottle of bleach is not great for morale. While this theory is fan-made and speculative, it underscores a crucial idea. If constructs are made of anything real, they come with real vulnerabilities. Could a lantern outsmart these vulnerabilities using physics? Maybe. Let's talk about the Doppler effect. If a light source moves fast enough, its wavelength shifts. Move toward an object and light shifts blue. Move away and it shifts red. A green lantern moving rapidly could shift the construct's color, potentially avoiding color-based weaknesses like the infamous yellow impurity. But to shift green into red or violet, the lantern would need to move at a significant fraction of light speed. We're talking tens of thousands of kilometers per second. 
even the fastest lanterns don't operate at those speeds in battle. Plus, aiming a construct, compensating for motion, and fighting an enemy at the same time? Practically impossible. It's a clever idea, but ultimately impractical. It shows how the physics of color, light, and motion could affect the functionality of these otherwise invincible constructs. The Green Lantern Ring is one of fiction's most fascinating super science tools. But when we run it through real-world physics, the problems pile up fast. Solid light? Not possible. Stable constructs from photons? Still no. Exotic matter, vacuum energy, and quantum trickery? Theories only. None of them proven, and all full of instability. And yet, this is what makes the Green Lantern such a compelling case study. It represents that razor-thin edge between imagination and science, where what we want to believe meets what we can actually prove. The ring works on willpower because that's what makes it so powerful in storytelling. Could a ring like that ever be real? Not without rewriting the laws of physics. But exploring these possibilities reminds us just how much more there is to discover. After all, today's hard no might be tomorrow's breakthrough. Let us know in the comments. Which scientific theory do you think gets us closest to making hard light constructs real? And if you could rewrite physics with a ring, what would you build first? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and recharge your willpower. We've got more science meets superhero deep dives coming soon.